usually I say, hey, everybody, welcome, I guess. Something inclusive. Yes. Yes, you welcome everybody, and I grumpily look on and, and yeah. agree that we are welcoming everybody. And reminder, just these are these are conversations, these are things um we talk with the community about. And instead of just answering it one place, we thought, well, we'll package these up and put them out so that other people can hear them and hopefully they're interesting. Yeah, and give you some insight either into game development or the game itself, or like we're pretty wide open and the things we'll talk about um for this. But it's just you know, we play games with the community every week. We like to talk with the community every week. And in fact, we've expanded to a new place, Game Jolt. Yeah. Our friend, we have some friends in Seattle who run a company called Game Jolt. That's another way that uh, gamers interact with uh, the community. And so we're there as well. You can get us, find out about us and all of your favorite games over there. Um, I also, we're also, probably not by the time you hear this, we won't be on iTunes because it takes them a while to approve. But we have a podcast feed in the works. So if you don't want to look at Chet and my beautiful face while we talk about this stuff and just yell at us in the car instead, that's going to be an option very soon for you. Uh, and I'll post the RSS feed in the Discord as soon as that's up, whether it's on iTunes or not. So uh, awesome. We're everywhere you want to be, I think, is the is the corporate tagline. Uh, but this week's topic was suggested by a Discord member. Uh, Cubby McQuilkin said... If it's not covered already, I'd love to hear your approach when it comes to writing dialogue and characterizations. Although Left 4 Dead's gameplay was great, I think what added so much to it was that each character brought their own charm into the world and not devolved into broad archetypes. I'd love to know more about the characters in the Anacrusis and your approach to shaping them. Now, I'm going to suggest two things. I think this is A, a very good topic for us to talk about today. Uh, And two, I think it's really good that uh, Cubby did a little bit of buttering up on that that question submission because that made you very enthusiastic about this question this morning when I was like, hey, what should yes. we talk about this week? So uh, appeal to ego, great. very workable, and it's a good approach going forward for people who have dev, dev blog suggestions. But I am shallow. Yes. You can <laughs> you can reach me that way a very easily. simple man, really. Yes. Um, but yeah, what's, what's um, like, I was really curious when I started, because we talked about this a lot. I was curious how, how this works and, and, Like you have some, you have, there's a, there is a well-defined process that you go to when it's time to write. Yes. Yes. I've kind of honed this over the years, but really, I really first started in Left 4 Dead 1. Um, And that is just really writing the monologues for the characters that you're going to use for casting. So when you cast, you're going to go send out these casting sheets, they're going to have pictures on them and the characters, and you're going to have a bunch of barks just to see if people can yell. And then you're gonna have like one monologue for them to, to act, to see if they can act because um, it's not heavy acting we're doing, but there's, you're saying lines with nuance in them that you want delivered the right way. Yeah. And so often um, I will write out things that we'll never use in the game. Um, I always remember Ellis's was about him talking about uh, Miller High Life, the champagne of beers. And- uh, It's written right on the can, Chet. It's right going there. Deep, going deep on that. Um, and so, you know, I'll just write those for each character and it's in there that you find out some about the character because you kind of, what works, what doesn't work. The monologues uh, you say out loud. So at this point of the process, it's normally, I've got a song I'm listening to normally one for each character, sometimes just for the whole game. Um, I listen to it mindlessly in the background a million times in a row. Um, it wasn't purposely done on this way, but I've learned that it's a trick to get me back into the mindset for writing for the game and for those characters. So different characters have different songs or the whole game may have a song. Um, in the case of the Anacrusis, it's the whole game has a song. Ooh. Um, which, you know what? I got asked this the other day when I was talking to somebody what it is. And I'm like, what is that song? I listen to it all the time and I have no idea. And it's actually Last by Tourist in the Range. I've Don't worry. Never heard of the song. Nope. Never heard of the band either or the people or anything. And my brain doesn't, I mean, brain chooses it. I don't choose it. And I just go with it. But so with that, I write these, these monologues and we start getting the casting sheets in. And often you'll find um, stuff that works and is not working just by how people react to the casting sheet. If you cast a white male, you are going to get somebody who reads it like an old prospector. I don't know why, but it's every single time we've cast the net out, some guy is sitting around a campfire reading the lines. Well, yep. we're going to have to head uh, off to the pick up the data card from the bridge and get it back to the teleporter before we can get out of here. 
so the only thing I could think of is in Seattle in particular, there's a lot of reading for books on like well, books on tape, but you know, um, whatever they call the fancy term for those. Uh, audio books is the technical yes. term now. Um, and uh, I guess there's a lot of Westerns because they all, they all do a lot of Westerns. I think every white guy can do a prospector voice is the thing. Yeah. It is, it is crazy. How it's, much you it, do that. it's like the, um, the other one that everybody can do is the, is the new England, uh, the the guy the guy that the teens stop to talk to on the way to the place they're going to get murdered in the horror <laughs> yes, movie and a new yes. movie set in New England a Stephen King movie yes um so so we send those out and we get those back and um often we will just react to that um sometimes it's an actor we've heard of or they have a body of work I remember um, also for Love for Dead two coach um. You know, he had previously played Cuddy in The Wire, and that's a very darker character than um, originally envisioned Coach. Coach was based loosely on a guy who was my high school coach, kind okay. of. Um, and uh, just kind of we go from there, and it's also like, okay, the character, this actor's a little taking it a little darker. He's a little, his voice is a little gruffer. He's got a different region. He's uh, uh, the actor who plays him is actually from like um, Virginia coastal and it's got a little bit different way to pronounce words versus Savannah, which is originally from, uh, that's fine. Like we work okay. with it. And so you go into the recording session and normally when you write for characters, that first, that first recording is just finding the character with them. So it's a lot of barks. It's a lot of, you know, the barks are the, you know, um, reloading like, um, like, things like that. Yeah. Uh, spar. Combat things calling yeah. out um, creatures. Uh, and it's through there that you kind of find the character for sure and you really nail it down and then you do that recording session it's normally four hours and then you come back and it's normally about that time that you start realizing there's some rules around these characters like so for the anacrusis liu um is always positive she's not she's positive in a different way than we did with lewis and love for dead she's positive in that she's a little more thoughtful and just how do i twist this to be always glass half full um, Guillaume is very practical. Guillaume studies the maps before they head out. He doesn't need to look at them during because he's ready for it. And well, Lance is just self-centered and just thinks about himself, which makes him the easiest character to write for, for me. Why um, is that, Chad? I don't know. Okay. It just happens to be. Weird. Um, but so I take those characterizations and we go into the map and I play the maps. And then I play the map as the character, well, how the character reacts to like, something. Like you get in the head of the character at that point yes. and you play the map and you're like, what would what would Lance say when he sees that the elevator is broken and that the, the, the plan is out the out the door, right? Yes. And, yeah. And so you'll hear Lance often will say things of, hey, I can't, where Guillaume or Nessa might be, we can't. And there's like some subtle things like that that they start doing. Um, and then it's really through there is me playing that character and playing that I'll start the interpersonal stuff. So like Guillaume and Lance don't get along really well together. Guillaume does will not call Lance Lance for a while. Um, and there's like some fun stuff that we do there, but it's like, you kind of start making the rules around the characters. And then I make those so that I have those notes ready to, to come back to. Um, and then we just start recording. And then, then I do a pass though, where I play as, especially this is a really good why we play test all the time. We bring out outside play testers or, um, even just on our own team, they'll just say lines or they'll say reactions. You're trying to guess the intent of the player. What do they think's happening? So if you can say something that matches that in character, it's really good. Oh, so like if you're, if the person is playing Lance, you want Lance to voice the inner monologue that the player has while they're experiencing the game for the first or 50th or whatever time. Yeah. And so when those sync up is when you have those best possibilities. Yeah. And then the final thing is we go back through and similar to, so originally when I very first started at Valve and I worked in the Half-Life series, I hooked up audio and we had a very rudimentary system called the response rules. And I hooked up audio meaning choose one to play, like, oh, if these events happen, we're going to play. Um, be, during that, um, we started hooking up Team Fortress and that was the first time we were doing that in a multiplayer level. And I started thinking about, okay, how does this work when you have a bunch of people playing and you don't want everybody saying something at the same time, but what's going on here? And then we really took that system to, to Left 4 Dead then and created a system that didn't play everything all the time. So since it's super replayable, you want people to come back in and hear different things at different times. And so we have a similar system now in the Anacrusis. 
And we do it a couple different ways of that, of like the, if you play the first episode, I think there's like 60 intro stories that they'll tell. Like there's a lot of different intro stories. So you get, you first hear, hey, here's what we need to do. And then you'll hear more about the characters. And it's not like that thing where it's some different version of the same world again and again and again. It really is. There's a lot of conversations happening when you, when the world's going on we're just getting to hear the different ones as we play. It's it's the kind of it's the kind of conversations you have when you play the same game with friends every night for a year, right? Like you, you yeah. like one night you talk about the game, the next night you talk about how you did the night before, and then the night after that you talk about the baseball game that you watched yes. the, you know that that afternoon. And then we start hooking up things where um they don't play all the time and it's not because we have something else playing there. It's just sometimes things don't play there. And those are often by a series of things of like are you looking at this object and this person standing this close to you? Um, are these two people alive and you're this far away? Um, and it's just making randomization, not just by a random number, but by the set of circumstances that have to happen around it. You're looking, you're like, you're calling out, you're building rules that generate edge cases that are interesting and, and fun for the yeah. players to discover. And then what, what you learn early on the first time you do that is um, if you don't take that random role and say, should I say this or not? And that first time you do it and you say no and bury it, you'll eventually say it every game because you're always reevaluating it again and again and again. So then we have to have this rule in our, our code that says, hey, if this failed, make sure it fails and never plays. Got it. Got it. And so then the game becomes a series of those, be it when you are at the finale and you need to grab the data key, there's a bunch of stuff happening. Had a, had a nice bug somebody had to experience where um, it was ungated and everybody just yelled that all the time at you. Those are called nags. We had a beautiful one. You're hooking one. up anything called a nag. You have to be very careful. <laughs> we had a beautiful one a few months ago where Guillaume, every time, I think every time he took damage, he said the line that he says before he jumps in an elevator sometimes. And it was, it was hilarious. But by the end of the 40 minute episode, pretty annoying, I'm going to say. He was saying that when he took damage to him in the front 40% of his view. <laughs> I was testing to see what it was like so that they'll yell. So what happens it gets, with the code is he takes, Guillaume takes damage outside his vision cone, which is like 40 degrees, let's say. Someone will yell, hey, watch out behind you. So he something happens to him. The code says, hey, if this is happening to me, is anyone near enough to say something? Say it. And I was just trying to see what does it feel like here? Should we be doing it in front and have something else there as well? And that's debug stuff. And I put it in and I left it in and everyone had to suffer for it. I well, felt bad. Well, but it, but it's interesting. It's a good example though, because the, like, the thing that people don't think about in this kind of game is that the player barks and the player call outs are one of the most important ways that we can, we convey information about game state to players, right? Like we don't have a lot of HUD elements. We don't have tool tips that pop up. There's no tutorial that we make people go through. So we teach people how the, like not just the story of the game, but how the game works by by using these kind of gentle nudges from the player yeah. characters to to tell people, hey, go, maybe look over there or check out the sky or, you know, hey, there's a giant horrible monster coming up behind you to murder you and you should probably pay attention to that. Yeah, and then it works best when it's in their personality and you kind of get a little of that and you get a little of that mixed in. And, you know, you realize over time that you have the model, you have the world, you have the voice. Like, um, you don't need to keep saying, I am Lance, an industrial, like, blah, 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 blah. You can just say the words and the words make sense to that character and it conveys all of that. Well, um, it, like really early on, you'll fall in this trap where you want to keep saying who the character is in the line versus just letting the character speak through the line. Well, and then there's the other, the fail states that happen that are interesting are like if they, like if the character gets stuck in non sequitur mode where like they're just saying, you know, it's it becomes almost like a catchphrase and then it feels like you're not, you're not having this interaction with, yes. like, like the, the difference between games that do this well and games that do this poorly is the characters feel real. They feel like they're people with motivation and, and they're actually, even though you're controlling them, they it still feels like they have at least desires, if not agency. Yeah, and also one of the things that we do um, and we learned early on was we record um, each of the lines separately and then we combine them at runtime. So instead of like having a paragraph monologue where the character is just going to start talking and not stop, we're always checking in between there like, should we stop talking? Should we stop talking? Has the state changed enough? 
that we should stop talking because you don't want to have that weird thing where like, Hey dude, everyone just died and you're cracking a joke about your grandma or whatever. Or, you know? or yeah, you're having a conversation and somebody jumps into the water. The conversation starts where you get in the water and then it just rolls back to the start of the last line when you get back out of the water again. It's always weird. It's, it doesn't yes. feel natural. The thing though, we're doing different in the Anacrusis that we didn't do in Lo the Love for Dead series. In Love for Dead series, when you played the game, you essentially cast a snapshot of the world and it didn't change. You can learn more about the world by kind of investigating more, but more was going to be told to you about the world where we actually have like an ongoing story that's evolving from episode to episode that's changing. And the characters are talking about that. People will get mad at maybe one of the characters or like change over time and you learn more information and, you know, kind of do a little bit of like, I think of it like um, an HBO series where it's, I, I say HBO series over Netflix series because HBO gates their stuff and they do it at weekly drops versus mm -hmm. all at once. And that's one of the things we're going to experiment with storytelling is we're not going to give you all the episodes at the beginning. We're going to instead drop them so that you can wonder what's going to happen here, what's happening here. And I would say to that, give us feedback on that because that's an experiment. I've been dared to just start with one episode and go from there. But when we release later this year, that seems like too little game. Yeah. So we're going to give people a little bit more than that. How much we give them is really kind of open to internal debate because, you know, what does that look like? And then what is this, what do you call this? Because like, if this is, do you call it early access? Do you call the first episode of an HBO series early access? I wouldn't. I'd call it the first episode, the pilot. Maybe the last season is early access, depending on the show, Chet. True. <laughs> but we find out, we find out there, right? And we, and we find out about with the players and we find out what the players react to and, I really want to be able to, in this more than we were able to in previous games, really react to the community and how they're talking about the game, what they're thinking about, what they're interested in, and kind of not just slav slavishly following what they say, but instead interpret that and make it more interesting for them and kind of really see where the story can go and what we can what we can say here and how do we do introduce new characters because we're going to introduce more characters. Wait, what? No, we're um, not talking about new characters at this, at this point, unfortunately. No, we're not. No. But later, later, no characters. later, later, later. Um, it's, yeah, so, but like, we're going to, we want to we wanna keep introducing new stuff and new characters and have them talk about it in a different kind of way and have them discover that with players. Well, it, it, it's, there's a few other things that we didn't kind of get into that I think are important. One is that all the players hear the same thing at the same time. Like we don't, the barks, we don't, we don't say play, you're taking damage bark and, and, player a hears bark one and player b hears bark two everybody hears the same same bark everybody hears the same story beats every when they're playing together um which also means that if you're playing with somebody who's never played the game before you might get a different version of the intro story uh you know the kind of the kind of scene setting yes. and stuff like that which is which is i think you, you know it's the idea that everybody can pick up and join and and like if you've if I've played the game 50 times and you've played the game once, you, we can still play together despite the fact that you've heard the same story, these story beats before and stuff like that. It's, it's yep. like, it's, it's, it, it, it's ongoing. It's something that you should be able to jump into at any time. And um, you should be able to enjoy, hopefully with whoever your friends happen to be, whether, wherever they are. So. Yeah. Cause yeah, the, the, to put a little clarifying on it. So it's like the first time you play like episode, the early episodes, it will say a very particular story beat. Um, and so if you've played it a bunch, but your friends never played it and they join you, it'll say that story beat so your friend understands. Yeah. But some of the other dialogue still changes throughout it. And there's just a lot more, um, to make the feel world feel alive, there's a lot more combat yelling. So it's okay that two people yell that there's a brute, it's just not one. Like there's a lot more just trying to add to the energy and the tension. We actually had a bug today where somebody who we won't name because it was neither one of us, um, had the VO kind of messed up. And so we didn't really hear a lot of EO. And so then you did not hear of, oh man, there's a brute behind us or the combat while the music played. And that felt really good because um, that's also another part of it. You didn't hear all the call outs and all the yelling, which I think adds a lot to the kind of the, the chaos of it. Well, it's it's the whole thing has to work together, right? When the music when the music was broken a few weeks ago and there was no music, the game world flat felt flat and dead, even though it was playing exactly the same as it always does. When the when the voices were broken today, it was it was the same 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 effect for different completely different cause. So yes, um, oh, and be and as we run off in a uh, little uh, let's see something a little uh, piece of trivia, we're about twenty five thousand words will go to localization. So we're going to get localized wow. as well. 
And so uh, people often wonder how long the script is. It's like 5,000 lines, 25,000 words is roughly it. For the first like few that. episodes, oh, let's say? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. We're going to keep adding. Like I said, we're going to keep adding. But for the first um, set of episodes, this first set of shipping episodes, let's very say. good, very good. Uh, I think that's as good a place as any to wrap it up. If you have a topic you would love for us to cover, the best place to do that is in the Discord, where you can also sign up to be a playtester. You can um, uh, leave feedback. You can sign up for our modding modding program, which is in progress right now. We're we're launching hopefully with mods. We're going to see how people are doing. I think later this week. Uh, and um, the what address is, it? What, is Discord, what is the Discord name? Discord.gg slash Stray Bombay, I think is the URL. Uh, what is it? Again, Discord. it's Discord.gg slash Stray Bombay. Um, let's see. We have videos up on TikTok showing new gameplay right now. You can go look at those right now at TikTok.com slash The Uh The YouTube channel has a lot of that video as well. Um, but yeah, just come hang out in the Discord. You play games with folks twice a week, mods on yep. Thursday night and... and uh, uh, just co-op games on t tonight. Right? It's, it's, it's got moved around and there's a holiday yeah. like this week. So this week we're playing David Defeat Source tonight. Ooh. Because one of the community members actually made a map for it. Oh, nice. So that's we'll awesome. Play that. So like we we'll love love to have people who are creating stuff as well participate as I think that's a really important part of the whole gaming process. Like to me, I just want to play a cool game. There's a game I wanted to play that didn't exist. So we decided to make it. And now we'll want to share it with other people and have them make it with me and make more stuff and add coolness to it. That's that's fabulous. Uh, so we'll be back next week. Uh, look for the podcast feed. Look for the Game Jolt page. Uh, I'll post both of those in the show notes. And then just stop by the Discord and say hi and hang out and chat. And when uh, we play the game, if you don't want to play, I go, I stream it on Twitch just really to kind of ch chat with everybody. And again, it's just us always wanting to have open communication with the community, let let you know where we are and what we're doing, and you let us know what you think of that. I couldn't have said it better myself. Kind of simple. See you all next week. Bye, everybody. See ya.